And as of right now, we're looking for people for Oshkosh, Wisconsin, Upshur County, West Virginia, and Pinellas County, Florida. My name is Allison, and I am the newest member of the Next Move group. Wagner CFT will establish a new manufacturing and assembly facility in Parker County, Texas. The project is expected to create 304 new jobs. This week, I'm going to go over two states that have some COVID-19 relief grants. I'm now no longer obese. I'm under it by one pound. <laughs> Only one pound. So if I go out and eat much today, I'm going to be obese again. Next Move Group, the voice of economic development. Here is Chad Chancellor. Good afternoon and welcome to this week's edition of the Next Move Group YouTube Economic Development Newscast, the voice of economic development. I'm Chad Chancellor, co-founder of Next Move Group. And this week, I'm happy to tell you about Next Move Group's growth. So Allison Knapp has joined our team as our operations manager. She's going to be based out of our St. Louis office. And Lord knows we need her. Our business has grown so fast. I'm sure many, many businesses go through this. We have grown so fast. We grew about 40% in 2019. In 2020, we grew another 30% or so. We're probably up 20% this year. And so as we grow, we have got to be able to organize ourselves in a fashion to scale this thing up because I think the sky's the limit for Next Move Group. And Allison brings that expertise to us. She's going to be our operations manager. Previously, she was office manager for R.W. Allen Construction Company over in Augusta, Georgia. So she's got real organizational skills. You'll all see her in a minute. She's going to go over some of the executive search jobs on the market that Next Move Group is not doing. So Allison... Thank you for joining our team, and you all are going to enjoy getting to know her both through YouTube and later if you come to our Mardi Gras events, so on and so forth. In hiring her, we've had to move our St. Louis office. So now our St. Louis office is there. It's six Cardinal Way. It's in the Price Waterhouse Cooper building there across from Bush Stadium. Brand new building as part of that one Cardinal Way area. It's a six Cardinal Way right across from Bush Stadium, for those of y'all who know the St. Louis area well. So that's where our new St. Louis office is, and we welcome Allison to our team. As y'all can imagine, one of the reasons we had to hire Allison is we are on fire when it comes to executive searches, both in the economic development realm, the chamber realm, and even the private sector realm. So a few of the ones we're currently doing that we're still looking for, as far as well, accepting resumes. We've got a few. We've closed the resume process. We're rolling now into the interview process, but as of Right now, we're looking for people for Oshkosh, Wisconsin, Upshur County, West Virginia, and Pinellas County, Florida. And we're going to have some more coming to you soon. I can't tell you about yet. So let's go through these one at a time. Oshkosh, Wisconsin is a tremendous organization in Wisconsin. You all have probably heard of Oshkosh. A lot of people have heard of their aviation show that they have every year. This is a longstanding organization, well-funded organization, had a big-time track record of success, great community, great organization, Greater Oshkosh Economic Development Corporation. Pay is going to be between 120 and 130 somewhere in there. I believe that application is going to close June 18th. So if you're interested in that one, go ahead and get your resume in. We're also doing the Upshur County, West Virginia position over in West Virginia. This is kind of in North Central West Virginia, south of Morgantown. If you all listen to many of our shows lately, I continue to be impressed with what West Virginia is doing, especially helping their entrepreneurs. But Upshur has a history in manufacturing. They've got some big time employers there, got some great health care providers there, and they're doing all kind of cool stuff. So if you want to apply for that one, that one's also due June the 18th. We got a great applicant in this week. So Get ready to compete for that one. Get your resumes in. And next, we're doing the Pinellas County, Florida Director of Economic Development. Pinellas County's there just west of Tampa, right there on the Gulf with all those beautiful, beautiful beaches. St. Petersburg be the biggest city you've heard of in Pinellas County, but they got many, many cities. But of course, St. Pete's where the Tampa Bay Rays play, so on and so forth. So this is going to be, if you like quality of life, buddy, Pinellas County is going to have it for you. That one's going to close in late June, so you got a little bit more time. You'll be seeing that one come out a few more times. Pay on that one's going to be around $150,000, maybe more, based on qualifications. I cannot believe we're celebrating our one-year anniversary of the movement. Last June the 4th, in 2020, we launched the movement, which is really designed to help economic developers improve their quality of lives and help them land more deals. That's what it's designed for. And in the last year, we've had over 410 customers of the movement. I can't hardly believe it. I want to pinch myself. I wouldn't have believed that if you'd have told me I wouldn't have believed it. 
we've had 205 economic developers join the movement, either join it themselves or through their power company. And we've had another 205 buy one video at a time or rent one video at a time. As y'all know, we come out with new content every single week. So this week's content comes out every Tuesday for our members. This week's content is how to read financial statements. What you really need to know on a balance sheet, on a profit and loss statement, on a statement of cash flows, what is important on it, how to read it. So you know if you're dealing with a good company or not. That's coming out tomorrow. Every week we come out with new courses. Sometimes we don't have the expertise in it. Our members not long ago wanted a course on how to spur middle income housing. We didn't have the expertise in that. So we went out and found it. But we've had 410 customers of the movement in the last year. So for this month, we're going to offer it at a 25% discount as our product of the month. So you can join the movement for $187 a month right now. Normally, it's $247. You can join it at $187 a month in June. Get in there while the discount's hip. You try to join July 1st, it's going to go right back up to $247. you will see I got my maroon on today. Mississippi State is starting our march to Omaha. And I got to tell you something. The NCAA, as far as I'm concerned, did us a favor this year. I usually gripe and moan and complain about what the NCAA does to Mississippi State. And they have not been kind to us over the years. Many times we deserve to make the tournament, the basketball tournament they didn't put us in. Many times the baseball team, they've stacked us as far as our bracket. This year, as I look at our bracket, we ought to make it to Omaha, and we've got a fine shot to go all the way to the national championship game. Now, I'm recording this video before this weekend series is over, so time you watch it, we may be put out, but I don't think we're going to be. I love the bracket that Mississippi State has been given. We should win this week, and that means next week, if we beat Notre Dame, we're going to be headed to Omaha, and when we get to Omaha, I like how it looks there. It looks like we're going to have to play Texas. We're going to get to avoid Vanderbilt and Arkansas to the championship game. This might be the year for Mississippi State to finally win the College World Series. So for the next two or three weeks, you'll know I'll be following it. And I hope I'm going to be in Omaha in two weeks rooting the Bulldogs off. And as we wind down on the weight loss side, you know, I've been updating y'all on the weight loss. I finally cracked through what was a very important milestone for me. According to the BMI calculator, I'm now no longer obese. I'm under it by one pound, <laughs> only one pound. So if I go out and eat much today, I'm going to be obese again. But as of right now, I'm considered overweight, and I'll take it. I started the keto diet in middle of November, thereabouts, at 268 pounds. And this morning when I weighed, I was 220 on the dot. So I've lost 48 pounds. According to the stats, I'm six foot tall at my height. At 220, I'm considered overweight. At 221, I'm considered obese. So I want to get another five or 10 pounds off to give me a little bit of wiggle room here because this is the first time, I guess, since about 2011 that I hadn't been obese. I guess that's what it is. So while I'm only a pound under it, for me, this is a big milestone that I'm willing to celebrate. And lastly, for this week's golf tip, I'm going to give you this tip from my own self. I don't remember who I got it from, but I got it and it worked. This past week, I did the family vacation over at Pensacola Beach. We go over there every year and play golf. And I got a ball buried in a sand trap, about 16, 17 toe. I hit what I thought was a great shot, and it buried right in the sand trap close to the lip. And I got up there, and I hadn't played golf in a year since he and I played last year. I believe it's the last time I played. No, I played with Chuck Sexton in East Kentucky about August. So I hadn't played golf since last August. Buried the ball in the bunker. Got up there, and I remember this tip that I got. If your ball buries in a bunker, normally to hit out of a bunker, you want to open your club face. If the ball's here, you want to come in behind it with an open face because it bounces the ball out. See what I'm saying? But if the ball is buried, meaning it's down in the sand, you want to do right the opposite. you got to remember in your mind to do right the opposite. You want to close your club face. Why? A ball that's buried under the sand, if you bounce the club, you're going to hit right in the middle of the ball. It's not going to come out of that bunker. You're going to drive it further into the sand. If you close the club face and hit behind it, the club digs, see, because it's closed and it goes under the ball, the ball will come out. So I sat there, I closed my club face, boom, I hit right behind it. Y'all, that ball came out. It went right up to the hole, almost went in. Gave me a little tap in putt for par. So the next time you're buried in a sand trap, you close the club face instead of open it. Close that club face. You swing as steep as you can and hit right behind the ball just as hard as you can. That ball will come out. It'll go right after the hole, and you will, your partners will have assumed the ball was sitting pretty. They'll never know it was buried.
Due to various demands on time and resources, economic development and trade and export agencies often struggle to complete effective market research and business outreach campaigns. For the past 10 plus years, Research FDI, along with our affiliated consulting groups at Research B2B and FDI 365, have leveraged our in-house knowledge, resources, and expertise in market research and consulting to help over 250 organizations directly facilitate inward investment attraction and new trade and export opportunities for their regions across a wide variety of industry sectors. Our highly personalized services and best cost to quality ratio in the industry ensures our client satisfaction, leading to repeat customers year after year. What are you waiting for? Leave the market research and business outreach to the expert team at Research FDI. To learn more about our services, contact us today. Welcome back to the Your Next Move section of this week's newscast. My name is Allison and I am the newest member of the Next Move group. To finish off my first week here, I have been thrown into the fire starting in Pennsylvania. State College is located right in the middle of Pennsylvania and is the home to Penn State University. So this is a great college town. They are looking for a president and CEO who will advocate and support businesses and increase business investment. This is a chamber position. This is for the Chamber of Business and Industry in Century County. So there is a salary range here of $140,000 to $150,000. If this is something you're interested in, you can reach out to Eric Peterson with your resume at cbicc at waverly-partners.com. Next up is Tennessee. So the Clarksville-Montgomery County Economic Development Center is looking for a new vice president of industrial development. So Clarksville, Montgomery area is located 50 miles northwest of Nashville. This is right off Interstate 24. They're looking for someone who will manage the day-to-day -day operations, administration, and programs of the Industrial Development Board. With a salary range of $120,000 to $130,000, you can email hr at clarksville.tn.us to apply and to get more information. Last up, we have the city of Danville, Virginia. So Danville, Virginia is looking for an assistant director of economic development. Danville is just over an hour south of Lynchburg. It's right on the Virginia and North Carolina border. So this position is looking for someone who will be responsible for developing and implementing strategies for the retention and expansion of businesses. So they are looking to grow. They've got a salary range of $65,000 to $104,000, depending on qualifications. To get more information and to apply, you can visit jobs.danvilleva.gov. Thank you all so much for hanging in there with me. I hope this helps you take your next steps. I'll see you next time. Hello, this is Brandon Nettles. In this week's Round on the Basis segment, I'll be detailing new industrial announcements from across America. To start us off this week, Century Aluminum plans to expand operation in Monk's Corner, South Carolina. The more than $60 million investment will create 100 new jobs in Berkeley County. Australia-based Wagner CFT will establish a new manufacturing and assembly facility in Parker County, Texas. The project is expected to create 304 new jobs. Bright Green Corporation will undertake a $300 million investment in a state-of-the-art Cannabis Agricultural uh, Research and Production Facility in Grants, New Mexico, and that project is expected to initially create 200 research and agricultural jobs. Southern Beverage Company plans to build a distribution facility in Ridgeland, Mississippi. That project is expected to create 200 jobs in Madison County. Bourbon producer Jackson Purchase Distillery will upgrade a long uh, idled facility as part of a new $8.76 million distilling operation in Fulton County, Kentucky. Kruger Packaging will undertake a $114.2 million investment to establish a state-of-the-art packaging and manufacturing operation in Harding County, Kentucky. That project is expected to create at least 150 jobs in the coming years. Whirlpool Corporation is investing $15 million at its factory in Tulsa, Oklahoma, creating 150 new jobs. The German-based company Wieland North America Incorporated plans to create 75 jobs with a $100 million copper and copper alloy recycling facility in Shelby County, Kentucky. Firestone Industrial Products Company 
uh, will invest $50 million to expand the company's automotive air springs manufacturing plant in Williamsburg, Kentucky. The company plans to create 250 full-time jobs. Domino's Pizza Incorporated will establish new operations and launch production, storage, and distribution in Lake County, Indiana. The company will invest $50.3 million and create up to 140 new jobs by the end of 2023. Old Dominion Freight Line is investing more than $13.6 million in the new service center in Bear, Delaware. Credit Karma will invest more than $13 million to uh, expand its operations complex with a new high-tech engineering hub in Charlotte, North Carolina. That's going to add 600 new jobs in Mecklenburg County. Stewart Tool Company Incorporated will invest $9.1 million to establish its first East Coast manufacturing operation in Troy, Virginia. Nestle Purina Pet Care recently completed a $19 million expansion project in Dunkirk, New York. That's going to add 104 employees. Suncoke Energy Incorporated will invest $50 million in its manufacturing operation in uh, Buchanan County, uh, Virginia. The company will retain approximately 100 jobs. Poland-based Campact Group will locate a new manufacturing complex in Muncie, Indiana. That company is going to create at least 345 new jobs by the end of 2023. MI Windows and Doors will expand its operations in Dauphin County, Pennsylvania. That's going to create 97 new jobs. Swift Prepared Foods opened its new $68 million facility in Moberly, Missouri. That project is expected to create roughly 200 new jobs in the region. Truck Light is relocating its existing HQ from New York to Erie County, Pennsylvania, and the company plans to create 90 new jobs. Shape Corporation plans to expand their aluminum division. Uh, with a new facility in Trenton, Ohio, the $41 million project is expected to create 171 new jobs. Custom Craft Poultry will open a new poultry processing plant in Little Rock, Arkansas. That's a $10 million project, and it's expected to create 290 new jobs. Finally, Sugar Creek announced plans to add 235 new jobs and invest $10 million at a new production facility in the city of Sharonville, Ohio. That's going to round us out for this week. Feel free to reach out if you have any new announcements that you would like us to feature, and I'll see you next time. Hey, everyone. It's Gabby Molise, and welcome to this week's Learning Lab segment. This week, I'm going to go over two states that have some COVID-19 relief grants. The first state I'm going to talk about today is New York. Governor Cuomo announced $3.5 billion in assistance for renters and small businesses. The $2.7 billion rental assistance program will provide funding for eligible households experiencing financial hardship and online applications are being accepted. The New York State Emergency Rental Assistance Program, ERAP, will provide significant economic relief to help low and moderate income households at risk of experiencing homelessness or housing instability by providing rental arrears, temporary rental assistance, and utility arrears assistance. You can learn more about that and how to apply at otda.ny.gov slash program slash emergency rental assistance. New York also launched the $800 million Small Business Recovery Grant Program to provide funding to small businesses to help them recover from the economic impact of the pandemic. Online applications are accepted starting June 10th. Flexible grants of up to $50,000 will be made available to eligible small businesses and can be used for operating expenses, including payroll, rent, or mortgage payments, taxes, utilities, personal protective equipment, or other business expenses incurred during the pandemic. You can learn more about that on esd.ny.gov slash business pandemic recovery initiative. Governor Cuomo also announced phase two of the Reimagine, Rebuild, Renew campaign, which launched Tuesday, May 25th, to make small businesses and residents aware of the many relief and recovery programs available. You can learn more about that on esd.ny.gov slash business pandemic recovery initiative. The next date I'm going to talk about today is Vermont. Vermont has launched an economic recovery program for businesses that have not received prior state and federal pandemic-related funding and for others that continue to suffer pandemic-related losses. The program is expected to deliver $30 million in federal financial relief to businesses that were ineligible for state and federal funding and to businesses that can show a continued loss of revenue. The state will start taking applications for the Economic Recovery Bridge Program today, June 7th. 
Grants will be issued on a first come first served basis. In the first 30 days, priority will be given to businesses that have not received or do not have a pending application for any state or federal financial assistance in 2020 or 2021. The Department of Economic Development held an informal informational webinar on Friday, June 4th, and you can find that recording on accd.vermont.gov. Well, that's all for this week, and until next time, 